Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have a new home inspection company. They're brand new, and I actually have a lot of new home inspectors that reach out to me pretty often and through emails, and I don't have the time to answer them all. So that, I'm sorry. So I'm hoping this podcast can actually answer a lot of your questions. So I'll just point you towards this podcast. So uh, right here, I have Jake Turner and Courtney Turner. They own Tucker Home Inspection. Sorry, Turner. I met Tucker, Jake Tucker and Courtney Tucker, and they own Tucker Home Inspections. Uh, they're brand new. They actually found us through YouTube. So if you don't know how to do that, you can actually type in Houston Home Inspector and we put all my home inspection content up there and the podcast content. And uh, they reached out and they just wanted to learn how to grow their business. So the best way I can do this, because I asked them to uh, build a list of like five comments, you know, five questions, and then we'll kind of build the podcast off of that. And these are five questions that probably more than just them have about starting a business or growing it or finding out how to get home inspections. And uh, he also bought our comments off of our home inspection whisper page. So we'll talk about that too. And I actually even asked him if they're good or not. So if they're not good, I'll, I'll have to build off of them, I guess. <laughs> so um, welcome. So the story behind him is actually Courtney reached out and uh, reached out and surprised her husband and got him on the show. So that's actually kind of cool. And uh, they started following us over a period of time. And yeah, so are, are y'all beer drinkers? Do y'all drink beer? Um, he does. I don't. Yeah. What do you, what? Jack Coke. You're a Jack and Coke guy. Nice. Well, Brown and Coke, but you know. We're out. Yeah. <laughs> Outer Coke. <laughs> you know, my father's first choice for a long time was Crown. And yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess as they got older, they switched to, to clear liquors, I guess, but they don't turn down some good uh, Crown every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm regular Coke. So. <laughs> say that again. That I'm just drinking regular Coke, so not, oh. not too crazy. Yeah, my, my wife's not a drinker either. She's actually allergic to alcohol. Yeah, oh, she. Wow. Yeah, she can't even drink it. So I got a permanent DD. So it's nice. I mean, he can't even. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I'm doing this uh, community IPA. It's actually a little strong for me. It's like 8.6 percent. It's too much. I think when a beer breaks seven percent, it's just too much. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, it's just like, uh. <laughs> yeah. What am I drinking? Yeah. So, anyways, so the first question I have, I don't know if y'all are going to be able to answer it or not, is. What do you think your biggest mistake has been so far in starting your business? Do you think you've even made a mistake? Oh, I don't know if we've had time to realize like some of the decisions we've made are mistakes yet. You know what I mean? I got you. Um, we, did, uh, we did sign up for this thing in, oh, I don't want this to like sound bad towards like this company. Uh, you know, it's probably bad. Tell it. <laughs> <laughs> We signed up for this thing. It's called uh, oh, Home Advisor. I, no, no. <laughs> I've heard about that. None of that. But it's called like Real Producers. It's a magazine. Oh, yes. And no for it. Yeah. <laughs> and so they reached out. I'm like, oh my goodness, these people reached out to us. We need to go meet with them. And it was like, yeah, for um, $350 a month, you get your ad in this magazine. It's this big, you know? And I was yeah. like, okay, are we doing this? And we signed up and she was like, so how many year contract do you want to do? And it hit me. I'm like, two years. This is great. Yeah, this is great. And then oh. I, was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, maybe we should have just did the one year and just see how it went and stuff like that. But oh, no. So y'all are still signed up for them right now. Next month is our first publication with them for the next 24 months. And so, but they also do this thing where you like have meet and greets with like the top realtors in our town or whatever in our city. And so we did go to one of those. Uh, we talked to one couple the whole time. They hand us up. <laughs> Haven't heard from them. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Could be okay. a mistake. Well, that is a mistake. So it's okay. The and it's easy to fall in for stuff like that. And it's actually good that y'all brought it up. You know, uh, I'd say like that top producer stuff would be good mistake to be made if you had the money or money coming in. So um, actually a book that I want y'all to start reading right now, if y'all can write it down, it's actually called Profit First. And so uh, it was on my last podcast and it, I brought it up on the, the most recent one that gets released on Sunday. But 
Mary and I just started doing it and it would actually even prevent you from making that mistake because you wouldn't have the funds. You'd be like, well, I don't even have the funds to make this mistake. So I'm not going to do it. But um, $350 a month, that is a lot of money. So you got to think about if you decide, if you decided to commit to $350 a month, just in Facebook ads, it would go like a thousand times further. Like, so the, the good thing is, is you do get meets and greets. So you got to make sure that you go to those and you take advantage of it. And uh, the meet and greets, there could be, they like to call them all pro- top producers, but they're probably not. They're probably just agents going to an area. And, and I don't like to discredit any agent because they're actually going out and getting business. So new agents are just as important to me as older agents in the field. And especially since you're a new company, y'all will grow together. And I heard that you haven't heard from them yet. So I did listen to that. And the, that being said, that's actually okay too, because it takes any encounter that you do, any marketing you do takes 30 days for that to become a referral or any type of business. So one thing is, is you just never stop marketing. So you don't get this like peaks and valleys and everything. So it's not a terrible mistake because you are getting a little bit out of it, but that's ridiculously expensive. You know, 350 is yeah. a lot of money. You know, that's a and nice that was car. Like the cheapest option. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So there are ways you can get out of the contract. I do know that because uh, one of my friends uh, did it. I can reach out to him and ask him how he did it. Did it. I'm not saying don't do it. Maybe try it six months. And if you're really not feeling it and you did participate in everything, uh, make sure that uh, you figure out how to get out of it. So it's not bad that you did it. Also, like you said, where you got met up and you got caught with one couple, that's easy to do too. It's actually, as a couple, it's good to split up and go two different ways. And then also, it's not about you passing out the cards. It's about you getting their cards. So as soon as they get your card, you're kind of done. You know, you said, hey, thanks. You got their card. You, and don't be afraid to ask. Be like, hey, do you got a business card? And they'd be like, yeah, sure. They give it to you because it's called the drip campaign. You're always getting, uh, you, you're getting their content and then you're adding them into your drip campaign. You know, you start write, you write them a letter. You're like, hey, it was nice meeting you. Don't forget we do home inspections. You know, you add them in your Facebook, you add them in Instagram. So, and then you get them in your email campaign. So it goes on forever. You know, so like it's about you meeting them, getting their information and then not letting them forget about you. So you can take advantage of the two or three fifty a month that you're spending, but it is a lot, especially as a, a new uh, business owner. Yeah. And, so yes. Do, he's pretty good about getting the card. Sometimes I forget, but we have a stack of business cards that we've collected from like open houses and things like that. Yeah. Um, so, and then also I've done a couple email campaigns at this point and I've just found like there's real estate offices in our area that have all their emails listed like online and stuff. Perfect. Yeah. So I just went through there and like copy and pasted all of those emails, like 250 of them Good. into my email campaign and did that also. Um, and then we got the handwritten letters idea from you. And yeah. so we did um, handwritten letters for some of those people that we actually have met in person. Yeah, it doesn't work as random because then it's junk mail. But if you meet them in person, that's the first thing you do. You can even like sit in your car after that event. Like, I mean, immediately you got their card, you figure out how you get their address, you can look it up and write the letter right in your car. And then, so you don't forget, you know, your work day's not over yet. And then send it out. Either. What? And they don't forget either. Yeah, you won't let them forget. Three, yeah, three days later, they'll be like, oh, I remember the Tuckers, you know, like, and then, and then it hits them again. And then they see the Facebook invite. And then, and then by the time you hit them two or three times, they can't forget about you. And it, so you can see like how it builds up over a period of time. But yeah, that is a pretty, that is a pretty tough decision when you first make it, you know, I, I did that too. I mean, I almost signed up for home advisor, but one thing is, is you want to remember about home inspections, never pay to play like ever. You can build your entire business just off of relationships. So especially starting out when it's just you two. So if y'all 
go out and I built my business completely on just open houses. I didn't get much success at giving breakfasts and stuff. Uh, I mean, I got a little bit of business, but it was open house and social media and Google. I got, you know, try to get all my reviews out and stuff like that. So that being said, that is a pretty big mistake. <laughs> but at the same time, you can use it to your advantage. But uh, my, I'd say my biggest mistake is actually, uh, I was coached a lot uh, when I first started, but it was like not listening to my coach. And one of, one of the things is, is whenever I first started hiring someone, my, my father, my coach at the time, he was consistently told me to fire someone. I'm like, no, 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 it'll work out, you know, and I was trying to force people into their roles. And you'll learn as you grow, if you are looking at hiring someone, that there are going to be people that want to work with you, not for you, but work with you. And I, um, that was one of my toughest lessons to learn. So, and I've actually have completely vetoed myself in any hiring. I actually don't have very much decision making because my problem is, is I like everybody. So I'm like, there'll be like some hobo on the street, be like, Hey, do you want a job? You know, like, so there'll be, there, there, I see potential. You got it. You work hard, you shower, you'll be good. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yes. So Mary's the more uh, the more rigid one, I would say, out of us when it comes, or more by the rules, and that kind of keeps me out of trouble. So yeah, I take on that same role also. So oh. I, feel like oh, we're yeah. in the same I go to work and I start talking to people. Like, okay, this is what you got to do, and they're like, "Oh wow, this is great!" And then I'm like, "What am I doing?" You don't yeah. got what it takes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So. The thing is, is like I, when I w was in your shoes, I mean like literally in your shoes, I would run into everyone and try to turn them into home inspectors. I mean, like I would try to grow my business. And the fact is, is I really didn't have much of a business to even to hire someone. So the best thing you want to do is just build your structure, build your business, get the machine rolling and you will run into people or people will reach out to you to join your company. So there's, I learned too is also it gets a little pressing whenever I ran into people where I was like, Hey, you know, you do this and you can make great money and it's a lifestyle that's awesome. And then, but people have their way that they want to live your li their lives and you have your way you want to live your lives. And that was a big mistake. It took me a long time to chill out. I'm talking like years. I wish someone told me that like when I first started, be like, just let them live their life. Don't, don't turn them into an entrepreneur. You know, leave people alone. Yeah, leave people alone. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone's an entrepreneur. And yeah, I, it, I'm excited about it either. They yeah. crawl spaces and they don't like addicts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not everyone's going to walk in an 8 and 12 roof. You know, they're, they think you're nuts. <laughs> you know. All right. So that being said, uh, we can like roll into the show a little bit. Uh, they have a list of eight, you know, around five or eight questions. Uh, some are business related and some are home inspection related. Okay. So I guess I'll start with like a broad one. Because, okay. Um, this is kind of what I think about daily. I'm like, okay, as a new home inspector, we have our license, we have, you know, our business established as far as like all the legality stuff, our logo, all that stuff. So then what's next? Where do you go from there? You know? So that that's a good question and honestly so the broad questions get broad answers too i guess I said there's two of you so you're able to divide these tasks up and one thing you're going to realize is uh that you're going to kind of grow a little bit faster because you have you'll both have more time so you have everything set up and where do you go well the first thing you need before you can start selling anything is a product a good product right you have to think about this in any uh business so your product is home inspections and you have to think your, to yourself, do you have a good home inspection? You know, do you have something that can keep up with your competition? I don't know if you have your competition's work, but you'd be actually surprised uh, to a lot of the home inspectors around you. You can ask, hey, can I read one of your reports? Inspector, we share, I share reports with my home inspector reports or uh, companies around me all the time. And if you have a good product, um, then the next step is, is make sure your process is there. Like, do, do you have a smooth in? Do you have a smooth out? Uh, do you, of, of getting in the house, you know, uh, 
when it comes to scheduling? Are you able to keep up with everything? How fast does your report go out? So those are really important questions too as well. Next is, is getting the business. And then and getting the business is the hardest part for most home inspectors and it's a grind. It really is a grind. And you'll be like, oh man, I got one inspection this month. Am I doing good? Well, of course you're doing good. You did, you just started your business. And then the next month you'll be like, oh, I got two inspections. Is that good? Well, actually, yes, it's good. You doubled your business in a month, you know? So, and that's literally what happened to me. I was marketing my business in Dallas, driving down to Houston, running into a bunch of open houses and I would only sell one home inspection. And I'd be like, man, this is bad. This is bad. My father was like, no, it's fine. You sold one home inspection and you just opened your business. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. And then the next month I did two. And then the next month I was doing one a week. And then the next month I was doing two a week. So it's not going to all come in and flood down the line. It's going to, it's going to just blow up over a long period of time. And the next thing you know, you're just going to be busy, you know, really busy. So right now, pick up a hobby when you're downtime and play some video games or something. That's what I did, you know, because you're just, just to try to occupy your mind a little bit because it, it just takes, it's a slow process. There's only so many marketing events you can go to. There's only so many open houses you can go to in a day. Cause I was hitting like eight to 12 a day. You know, I was like, I mean, y'all probably could do that. You map it all out. You know. Yeah, which we only, Sunday, we yeah, on su Saturday and Sundays, we've gone out. Sunday is like our best day, but we hit like 11. So we try to go out every Sunday to open houses. But kind of going off the back of what you said, um, you're talking about, you know, our competitors and things like that. So a little bit of background on me. I actually sold real estate for a while and then and my mom is a broker of one of the real estate companies up here in Tulsa so I've been around a lot of home inspectors is what I'm trying to get at yeah and um and then there's a big competitor here who's only been in business a couple of years has like really blown up doing like you know oh like around 150 home inspections a month I do a lot of like creeping research and stuff That's okay. like that. it's not creeping that's just research yeah this i do it all the time related yes <laughs> they have a sample report on their website so i've gone through there i looked at that in comparison to ours and i'm like what the heck because these are the most like basic inspections i've ever seen like everything's just like inspected yeah. inspected inspected like part like three photos and the whole thing and I'm like, yeah. what's going Hardly on? Any deficiencies or anything? It's just so, inspected. But I'm like, wow. The reason he's getting business is because people like him. His marketing is good. Like, I can I don't know if I can say this, but like, he gives out free pies at every inspection. That's cool. I, hey, yeah. marketing's marketing. Uh, one of the things that I actually thought was funny. One of the guys that I didn't work out in the business, but I thought it was a genius idea. You know how we have to set the oven to 350? He's like, what if we made pizza at every of, at every uh, inspection? Oh, and I was like, that's actually kind of a good idea. <laughs> they would relate the smell of pizza to your, your business. I don't know, but, but I see what you're saying, but keep going. The marketing is there and he's like, people like him. He's personable and everything. So it's like, there's no, I mean, the inspection quality, eh, you know, High, like pretty expensive and then in comparison to us like when I try to compare and contrast and everything I'm like okay we have like this flat rate that we kind of roll everything into even like infrared and things like that and we've gone I mean we bought all the tools on your list and stuff like that oh yeah so nice top of the line tools you know mm -hmm. and so I'm thinking how do you compete like when you know that you're delivering like a really good product and everything that could potentially even be like superior to other people however people just already know and like them do you i mean how do you compete with that time it okay. just, just takes time you know like i said before it just it will slowly roll out over a period of time so it, it's not about beating them because it the market's there you know someone's I was actually, I had that same mindset too. There's a really good inspection company here. It's called Fox Inspections, really popular. And he's a good businessman. And I was thinking, I'm like, man, I, I want to beat him. You know, I need to be better than him. I, I compared my product. I'm like, it's similar. Why am I not getting any business? Well, it's just time. He's been here for 20 years, you know, like, so 
uh, I don't know how they're, you know, five or I don't know, you said new, but five years in front of you, you know, that's five years of relationships that he's built in front of you. So like you said, that one couple, well, to run even a decent, somewhat decent company, you need at least a hundred agents underneath your belt that steadily send you business, you know, that are able to contact you at any time. So you're talking, you know, short periods of time. So I really wouldn't look at them as like comparing you to them. I would just say, make sure that your product's strong Mm -hmm. and just stick with really good marketing and just be, like you said, likable, personable. And the pies thing, I think it's, I don't discredit any marketing. So if it's working, it's working. That just sounds really expensive. You know, if I'm doing 150 inspections a, a, a month and I'm doing 50, 150 pies, that adds up a lot. You're talking like a few thousand dollars in pies. <laughs> Makes me feel better about our $350 ads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, I still don't think it's like terrible, the 350 Like I said, as long as you have those meet and greets and you take full advantage of the meet and greets and ask them if they'll give you an email list out of it. If there's 500 of them, that's 500 emails. You know, that's a lot. Yeah. 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 And 500 people, you can reach out and say, hey, can I meet for coffee? I would like to tell you about our business, you know? And so it's, you got to do the cold calls a little bit. All right. So what's the next one? Okay. So I'm just going to pick one of these randomly. So you were talking about like Google reviews and things like that. So that's something that I just started working on is our Google business. Do you have any advice when it comes to SEO? Okay. So I've done a lot of re I've actually never paid for SEO ever. So the, the biggest thing that I have know is make sure you have a blog on your, on your page that you want to post once a week on. And it doesn't even have to be something you write. You can even give other people credit on, on it. And then if you start doing videos or YouTube or Instagram, just tie those posts into your page. And then um, I, from my understand, our product is too niche to really... Um, to really deserve SEO. I know there's some people out there will completely contradict me and be like, no, you need it or whatever. But uh, I do know other companies that are very large that absolutely go against spending any money on SEO and anything on Google ads. So it's not needed. The biggest thing that you need is Google reviews, Google reviews and turn into cash. So, I mean like 100%, if you can, even if you have to beg them at the end, I mean, like seriously, at the end of every inspection, be like, hey, the best way that I get my business is through relationships and Google reviews. Can you please uh, help me out by uh, just leaving a review? And then you'd be surprised just by seeing that one little one-liner. People are like, yeah, and they're all about it. And then they'll start writing a review. I wouldn't go and use a blip service 100% yet. Because if you go and use a blip service, I, like you said, you don't have the cash flow to it yet. As soon as you get cash flow, then I would sign up for a service that helps generate the ads even more, uh, okay. where they send out text messages and stuff to your clients uh, about sending them. But I got my first like 120 or 130 just by simply asking them. And they're like, oh, how do I do it? I'm like, oh, you just type in a action home inspection group and they'll, and then they'll come up and sign, sign up for it. So. I know that was a really long answer, but did that help? Yeah, I then, my next question I'll ask about is, how do you get into real estate offices? Because I've seen, um, like I actually watched your video from like a year ago where you went in and you did kind of like a little training about like home inspections, you know, and the types of home inspections, all that. So how do you even get into the offices? Uh, So actually, that ties it into the the book a little bit uh, that is on our page. And because you bought the comments and you didn't even know about the book, I'm actually going to make sure that you'll give me your email before we leave and we're going to send it to you uh, for free. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, the, the book's uh, like $49 and it's literally like how we operate completely. And it, and it's a basic script. You, you call in and, Mary, that's a really good question for Mary, uh, but I'm going to do my best to answer it because she's the one that handles this. I used to do it a long time ago, but it's changed. You know, seven years or eight years ago, you could literally just walk in the front door and it was fine. 
but also we have COVID these days. Uh, but the, be- the best thing to do is just call. You call and be like, hey, um, we, we're a home inspection company and we'd like to sponsor your, your team meeting. And uh, who do we talk to? The person at the front desk is a gatekeeper. So you just be nice to them as best as you can. And you, you're, they're going to be like, oh, it's this person. And it's this person, whoever. I'd be like, oh, can I talk to them? And they'll be like, yeah, they'll transfer over. You'll probably get a voicemail. Do not leave a voicemail because they ignore and delete them all. So what you do is you call back again. And then you'd be like, hey, can I please have their email? I'd like to shoot them an email. And then you don't leave them alone. yes yes you build your database of these people that do the trainings and be like hey we'd like to sponsor your team meeting uh when's the next uh, available date to come in uh that is the best way to do it and uh go from there the reason why i wanted mary here too as well and i wanted you here uh uh, courtney is because it whenever y'all are running a business it's it it really is 50 50 like it's not uh your job is is not any more important than a Mary's job. You know, both of our jobs, like the business would not run if you didn't literally divide up the tasks 100%. Mary can actually answer some of your marketing questions probably a little bit better because I did market really hard, but the times have changed. So what's the next one? Um, So I'm glad she just came in because this is actually a question I think that she'll be able to answer pretty well um, just from like, the Instagrams every Monday when you get on there and you kind of talk about your week, you know, I'm like, okay, how do you do all this stuff? But um, one of my questions is how did you get into doing the continuing education classes? Okay. Are you guys in, you're not in Texas. No, we're in Oklahoma. We're in Oklahoma. All right. So do you have a state licensing board in Oklahoma? Yes. And do they have a um, certification for education? I don't know. Okay. So in the state of Texas, I have to be certified to be an educator through our licensing board. So that's the first step is you go to the licensing board and see what the requirements are. There's typically a fee. So in Texas, it was $400 to get my license. I also had to write an essay, like a college entrance essay on why I was qualified to be a real estate instructor. Okay. So in the state of Texas, you have to have um, been a home inspector or real estate agent for so many years. But in my case, they made an exception because I actually own the home inspection company or half own it. Um, And I also have an education degree. Uh, I have a master's degree in museum education. So I kind of finagled my way through through a loophole. But that's the purpose of the essay, right? To just kind of prove that you have, you know, what it takes to teach. And then, um, so you pay, you write the essay, you pay the fine, then they fine. approve you or not. They're going to keep the money in, in Texas. They keep the money no matter what. And then each individual class is also a fine as well, or a fee, I should say. So in Texas, you write an application for the class. Um, you have to write a timed outline and then you pay $60 and they approve it or not. So, so don't be too worried about experience. Your experience, whatever it is in the past is probably just as good because whenever I first got into the home inspection business, I was able to use my Marine Corps background as enough experience and they gave me the license and then I let it expire because I got too busy as ho- with home inspections. So and now I hold your license. Yeah. Now, now Mary can hold my license because she's the, the owner of the school, but you're able to actually, you can figure out a way to make it seem like you have enough experience yeah, to yeah, yeah. give the education hours. So yeah, your, your steps would be just to figure out who, how real estate agents hold their license probably the same way that you guys get your license. And then you fit and then you go through the process of starting a school. So the other loophole is if they deny you, um, your husband could apply since he's a home inspector and he could hold your teaching license too. It's oh. different in every state. Though. Yeah, but you it's just, different in every state. Yeah. So again, check with your licensing board. And then as far as how as I got into the offices, I just started reaching out and, um, you're not supposed to do them for free in Texas. So there was kind of a loophole where I was like sponsoring them. That's, but I would. Yeah. A action sponsors sponsored, the yeah. class. We pay, they pay for all the. the yeah. yeah. But now I do charge, you know, once I got my foot in the door, now mm-hmm. I charge. Um, but agents want those hour CEs. It helps them rack up their credits. I just reached out to all the agencies and said, Hey, I'm doing this. Here's my class roster. Let me know if you want me to sponsor a lunch and learn. And then once, once COVID started, I moved everything to zoom. 
and I send out a, um, an email to all of our agents in the ISN um, with, every week with my class offerings. And um, I, they do sign up, they do registration through Constant Contacts. Okay, awesome. So then for, for us in Oklahoma, there's two different licensing agencies. We have like the um, Oklahoma Real Estate Commission, and then we have the Construction Industries Board, which is what home inspectors fall under. So then I guess I would go to OREC, like the Real Estate Commission, rather, not the yeah. construction. Yeah, the best, it's a really good way of marketing. You know, when I teach, um, I really don't market my company at all. I teach the class, and at the end of the class, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm a home inspection company. If you need a home inspection, feel free to reach out. But that is the most amount of marketing I do in a CE class. What's most important is they're seeing my face and they associate my face with my company and, and we get a lot of business out of it. Yeah, it's about building relationships, yeah. you know, like I said before. So it's the same thing. It's not about selling your, just your business all the time. You're selling yourself. And as the more they get to know you, the more they trust you. And then they, honestly, you do become friends with them. You're not going to sway your inspections towards them at all. They understand that. But it really, it ends up being a better business model instead of just doing inspections for strangers all the time. Yes. They literally, you, they work together for the client. So the client is fully informed and they also can ask you questions a little bit easier too because to build negotiations. Yeah. And you, you know, you find who your top agents are, you exchange little Christmas gifts with them every year, you know, go out to lunch with them or dinner with them. You just build kind of that personal relationship. The other thing is, obviously, I'm dressed like a bum. This is my work from home <laughs> uniform. Yeah. But when I'm on Zoom uh, or in person, I do business casual. Yeah. I don't wear a home inspection uniform, although I do have one. Um, I dress business casual because I mirror what the agents are wearing. So if your agents are more casual in Oklahoma, then you can be more casual here in Houston since it's a big city. People tend to dress up. We get the high heels just, and the lipstick and stuff. You so, just mirror them. Yeah. You, so you just, whatever your agents are wearing, that's what you wear too. Yeah. Okay, that's good advice. But um, also, um, Jake, what I do is I always dress like a home inspector. Literally, he does. No matter what. That's yeah. what I try yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, like even when they were, yeah. yeah, women are held to different standards than men. So, so if we were to dress like that, they probably wouldn't take us seriously. But for but that's Chris, another topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so yeah, like what I do is like even if everyone you go to like a cocktail party and they're all like in their suits and nice clothes and stuff, I will literally wear my fishing shirt, you know, my home inspection shirt, my tool, my uh, my you know, my Leatherman. Leatherman on the side, my home inspection pants and boots and people just be like, Oh yeah, that's Chris. Yeah. And they then I'm in, I'm in four inch high heels. <laughs> you know. uh, I have two, I have two outfits. I have home inspection outfit and I have a bum outfit. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my wardrobe's a little more diverse. So. Yeah. So what, what's the next question? I guess like my last question and I'll let you kind of like take over or whatever we just had we've kind of lucked into a few things and our like i said we've been in business five weeks now so mm -hmm. we have we got in with one lender we went into one real estate office and ended up meeting this older man who was just selling like crazy so he's already sent us three home inspections so awesome. that was just like a luck of the draw type of thing and then we had somebody that he used to work with just reach out to us who is actually does something in our town for like new construction and is talking to him about getting involved in new construction um, as far as inspecting and everything. And so, but my question was, is how do you get into new construction inspections? Like, is that, I mean, as far as the education of learning, like how to do the phases, getting in with builders, you know, all that. If you'll just kind of, I know it's broad, but if so, so I think it's, it might be different in Oklahoma, but here we don't get in with builders. Builders hate us. Yes. So yeah. you get in with, yeah, you get in with the, uh, the, the agents. So when like I teach a class on phase inspections to agents oh. and, um, mm -hmm. also yeah, so we market that as part of our elevator pitch. It, when, if I do, when I was doing breakfasts and team meetings, our elevator pitch mentioned that we did the phase inspection. And then there's always the question of, oh, what is that? And then you, you kind of jump off from there. So it was part of our marketing pitch. Um, yeah. You really don't get in with builders. Builders don't want you to do phase inspections. You know, you know, it's funny that you said that you met somebody that's just consistently sending you jobs, you know, that you just met them. Make sure that you don't forget about them. 
And then, oh, one thing that Nathan just mentioned, actually, he just commented, he said, new construction is not for the inexperienced. So you want to make sure that you really know what you're talking about in phase two and phase ones before. So I'd get the, the finals completely knocked out before you moved into phase two and phase ones. Um, okay. And then my ADD kicked in right there because uh -oh. I read that. <laughs> um, oh, but you said, you said, um, with meeting someone, my first year in business, the agent, uh, I did 155 jobs my first year in business. And that's when I was coached all the way through. And one agent, one office sent me 40 jobs. Yeah. So it's not, it's actually not bad that you met someone that does that. It's, you'll find out that there is the 10% or the 1% actually of agents that do do that, but you don't rely on them 100%. They're going to meet other people and they're going to send jobs to other person, but you want to make sure you stay on top of mind, write them thank you notes after every inspection and remind them, be like, Hey, you know, we really appreciate it, you know, and, and move on with your life. The yeah. thank you notes are really big. They love those handwritten thank you notes. When I, before we hired our marketing coordinator, I wrote about a hundred thank you notes a week. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that was a big part of my job was just writing. I had like claw hand. Um, <laughs> but, she's five and she's like, okay, I'll do it some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have pace, pace yourself basically. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, now we have someone who writes them for us. And we also use for our buyer's agent thank yous because we write a thank you note to all of our buyer's agents every week. And that's a lot. So we use Postable, which generates, um, I don't know if you've heard of them. But I've heard of send out cards, but I've never heard of Postable. Yeah, it looks like somebody wrote the card. Uh, and that's what goes to our buyer's agent just because it would be unethical for me to ask my assistant or our marketing coordinator to. Yeah. Yeah. write all of those yeah, thank we, you cards yeah, for our buyer's agent of, we do a lot of inspections a month so yeah that, that would hurt their hands because then in, in yeah. some air in some areas we actually send it to the buyers and sellers agents yeah because we want to grow our business in that area because you got to remember so i mean just with you guys you know you know the seller's agent you have their contact information don't they're not I mean, it's, it's food on the table. Don't let it go away. So make sure that you just say, Hey, thanks for a smooth transaction yep. and just send it to them. And then they'd be like, Oh wow. You know, you'd be surprised. Like how what we say is actually, um, thanks for such a smooth transaction. We really enjoyed working with you. Keep us in mind the next time you need a home inspection. This is, yeah. and then I list just the basic of the service. We, you know, same day report, free termite inspection. We look forward to your business. We're never too busy for your referrals. Yeah. A action home inspection group. And we always sign off on our business name. So it's not like from Mary or from Chris. We always sign off a action home inspection group. And then we throw a business card in there. Yep. So, yep. Don't let the seller's agents be left alone too. Yeah. They're just as important. We totally have. So that's, yeah. we have up to this point. So I'm glad that you said that because that's a change that we'll make going forward. So Nice. All right. Sweet. So what do you got? Jake, well, what I have is the problems I'm running with, with doing an inspection. I'm trying to get quicker and trying to do on site reporting. Yeah. And I just like, I'm going, I'm doing it on site. And I'm like, screw this. I'm starting taking a million pictures. And I'll say, I'll just do it later because it feels like it's slowing me up by when I'm doing my uh, process of home inspection. Okay. So that whenever you're saying you're slow, what's your time limit there? Well, I think I'm slow is what I'm right. I'm, exactly. I'm not like looking at my watch, but like, even when I get done, I'm like, wow, I killed that in two and a half hours. That's pretty good. But in my mind, I'm like, Oh, I should be faster. I should, you know, no. I should be already in the attic right now. And I'm sitting no. here. He, yeah. So he does like, a, like his little timeline in his head is like an hour per thousand square feet. I don't remember where you heard that from, but that's kind of what he does to like gauge. Yeah. That's, that's how I kind of gauge. Yeah, I don't know there. where we got that from, but I know we heard it somewhere. We were like, okay, that sounds good. No, that, that, that has been said before, but your minimum is an average of three hours if you're writing the report on site. So today I was doing a new build inspection and I think I was there three and a half hours. Uh, always. I don't ever actually go below three hours most of the time. And then also... Uh, even today, I had a brand new build and there was all kinds of stuff wrong with it. And it took me three and a half hours with report written and reviewing it. So I uh, don't get caught up with trying to keep up with those inspectors that go in an hour and a half and then they go home and they write for three hours. 
I think it's actually more important that you're there longer writing the report and then you deliver it to them right then and there because then your work's done. You know, whenever you go home, that time is yours. And then also they have the finished product that you know that you don't have to remember something. So if you're going through your report and you're like, hey, oh, I need to write this, then you can run to the oven and make sure it's off. You know what I mean? Or reset the AC the way it needs to be. So uh, don't get caught too much up on time. I say if you don't break the three and a half hour mark, depends on how big the home is. Say it's a 5,000 square foot or whatever and you're in the four hour mark, but that's fine. But I'd say a 2,200 square foot, my average time is about three hours from start to finish with the report written and in their sight, in their, in their hands. So I wouldn't get too focused on that, especially if you're saying that you're taking an average of two and a half hours. That's good. Yeah, don't focus on the time too much. Okay. Yeah, well, it just, I get home, I'm starting to flip through all my photos, and I'm like, oh, I got to add this, I got to add this. And then uh, and then all of a sudden, it's 9 o'clock at night, and like, but I want to get a good, solid report out there, but I don't want to pass anything up either, you know? Yeah, it, it takes time, it takes practice, uh, but you're right, if you're not comfortable, I don't know if you how many inspections you have under, underneath your belt, but like, it takes time to actually build it. So yes, yeah, so, yeah, so seven. So I think it's okay to take it home. You, okay. I, it takes before my inspectors are trained and coached, it takes them about a hundred and plus inspections yeah. before they're actually producing it and going over it with the client successfully on site. Yeah, so, that's eight to 12 weeks of just five a day, five inspect. Like, no, not five a day. I'm sorry. <laughs> five, five, uh, five days a week two is jobs what a I day. meant to say. Oh, five yeah. days a week, two jobs a day. Yeah. So, so that's eight to 12 weeks. It's a pretty long process. Yeah. We hammer them with experience. So I say, do your best, collect all your data. And then, but I, de I definitely recommend if, since you're a little slower, finish it that day. I know your days are long. Oh, yeah. Your sure time will. Your time will get better, and it's good that your end goal is to try to get it done on site. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I would definitely focus on that. So what's the next one? I was at an inspection uh, two weeks ago, and it's been raining off and on all day. And when I got there, it was kind of misting, and I tried to get on the roof on every inspection. And I found myself getting up on the roof, and then I got up there, and it was like way more slippery than I thought. I was like whoa what am i doing up here and i was kind of like crawling around like a cat you know so i was like probably looked like an idiot <laughs> yeah so but I was kind of, uh, my question was when i mean your safety when do you put your safety like hey i'm just going to inspect this from the eve and from my ladder or how do you or do you try to get up on the roof even if it's been rained on and what so that's Honestly, a really good question and a good point. My safety is always number one. I want to be doing this forever. You know, I want to be doing this until I'm old. You know, there's some inspectors that are in their late 60s and still perfectly inspecting and perfectly fine. So if I get up there, I mean, my first step on the roof and I'm like, hey, this is not safe. I will literally take time out of my schedule to go back. You know, it's just be like, hey, if they're, if they're not if you can't collect enough data, you're like, Hey, I don't feel comfortable saying this roof is good or not, then go back. But if you just by going to the Eve and walking around, carrying your ladder, putting in the extra man hours to go all the way around, you'll probably collect enough data to call a roofer out or not. So yeah. my safety is always number one. I don't crawl on anything I can't get on safely. And I'm kind of a monkey when it comes to getting on roofs. I climb up roofs that some inspectors won't get on, but I always judge my path where I have a place to fall. So like if I'm crawling up a roof, I have a plumbing stack I'm going to run into or a flu. And if I rip out the flu falling down, I'll fix it. You know, I'm not going to fall to my death. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> it, my safety is always number one. And if the client's not happy with the product, just give them their money back. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. You're in it for the long game yeah. and and of course, we're in it to make money, but also you don't want to be given a product that they're not happy with. So I turn around, I do it my best. I'll write up the roof the best I can. And for whatever reason, they're like, you didn't get on it. Be like, hey, when it dries tomorrow, I'll get on it. And if they're still not happy, you're not going to make them happy to begin with. That's just part of business one-on-one. You can't make everyone happy. Be like, hey, since you're not satisfied with the product today, I'll refund your money and uh, you can choose another home inspector. And and honestly, most people take it and they'll leave it alone. 
you know, so. And on a side note, um, you should look into short-term disability through Aflac. It's like six dollars um, paycheck, a paycheck. So they take it out per paycheck. I know you probably don't have an established paycheck, but you can talk to them about it. And what short-term disability will do is, after two weeks, it will kick in what you were paying yourself at eighty oh, percent. That wow. way, if you fall off the roof. Um, you can still be getting money. And it's also big, like if you're paying your wife and um, she decides to, uh, she gets sick leave because they do cover COVID as well after two weeks. They also cover maternity after two weeks. So like you guys can both get it. And that way, if you can't work for whatever reason, you could still make your own, your paycheck at 80% paid out by Aflac. And that's for six months on short term. You can also pay extra for long term. It just depends on what your comfort level is. But we ask all of our guys to, we, our company offers short term and long term, but we ask all of our guys to carry the short term because my, I mean, we offer, we offer workers comp as well. But my fear is if, if something does happen to them and they can't work, I still want to make sure they're paid. And you can do that on a personal level as well. You can just contact Aflac and they can arrange it for you. Okay, yeah. so that is when I guess you are set up as like an employee of your business is mm -hmm. when you're getting a paycheck and stuff yes. like that? Okay. Yeah, we both are W-2, Chris and I. We're actually, um, we are employees of the company, but we're also shareholders of the company. So we actually don't own it. We have bought into the company a dollar each. Um, <laughs> Because we are an LLC as an S core, and that depends on your state. Not all states allow S cores, but uh, basically we're shareholders, which means um, not only do we get paid as W two, but we also get shares, dividends of the company um, in the form of distributions. So obviously, you got to talk to your accountant about that. But it's really helpful if you do get uh, short term disability to, to have that W2 just as proof of what you're making. Cause that's what they'll base it on. But also it's great for taxes. You don't that's, have to worry about taxes. Honestly, that's pretty far advanced. So we'd probably leave that alone. Oh, she until, asked the until, question. Yeah, until down the line. No, she asked the question. Well, another thing is I'm constantly on the line looking at the serial numbers on these old AC units and furnaces, trying to find a serial number or rating and all this and I'm like, the internet's like, I've never heard of this unit. And I'm like, crap. Because, you know, my report's asking, what's the annual fuel utilization efficiency? And I'm like, it's electric. Which, it's what report it, form I, are you using? Huh? What report form are you using? Spectora. Spectora. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> That's funny. I That's know. funny. I, did I, since you bought the comments, did I send you uh, our template? Respectora? No. Okay, well, I'll send it to you right after this podcast. What happened? Sorry, we're on the InterNACHI template, is so what I figured I'd throw that in. Uh, so, what I do is since you bought the comments, I actually, my, I was going to use Spectora and then I realized that as my company was growing, it wasn't going to be, it was too expensive. Like, especially when they came out with their advanced features or whatever it was, it was going to cost me like $15,000 a year to run it. So, I was like, pass. And yeah. so, what I did is I actually have a majority of all our comments and, and a base template built out and I'll send it to you. It's in the Texas format, but I think there's a way that you can switch it over and, and use it. So if you buy our comments, that's actually what we do is we shoot that template over to you. I just also, there's another inspector. His name's KC. He's a good inspector and he has a template too. He's up in the north somewhere, but he has um, he has a really good template too on Spectora, and it's really good. So I'd probably move away from the InterNACHI one because it's really not applicable in today's marketplace. So I I definitely I'm going to send you that Spectora one right after the podcast. It uh, it's it's a little bit better, but you got to make sure it's legal in your state. I don't know Oklahoma rules. All right, so what's the last one? You got one more. Uh. I don't know if I have another one. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. All right. So, I don't think I do either. So. All right, great. So that's a great podcast. You know, honestly, I get a lot of those questions. I know you might think that they might sound amateur, but a lot, I had a lot of those same questions when I first started too. So it's perfectly fine. So, um, you know, they're really great questions. And honestly, if you've only been in business for five weeks, you said five weeks yep. and you've done seven inspections, you're like, way ahead of the game. So yeah. don't think that you're slow or anything, especially if you're doing it part-time like you said you're doing. 
So I think you're honestly, your marketing's on point. Of course it can be critiqued. We're going to send you the book right after this podcast, start reading the book. And then you're going to see that the process you're taking, you're probably just missing one or two steps and your marketing's on point. And then really, I know you, you talked about like safety. It could easily be misconstrued like customer service to like being stupid. You know what I mean? Like, so I would just definitely always take your safety and plur- because if you fall off and you're in welding, you're out of that job. And then also you're out of your home inspection job. So yeah. I want to be doing home inspections forever. So make sure you don't go in a crawl space that has water in it because, you know, electricity travels through water. It only takes a live wire to be sitting there. And then also don't walk on wet roofs. There are some roofs that you can walk on after a light mist and you're perfectly fine. But if it's dark, do not get on it. Yeah. Um, and if you have any questions about marketing, feel free to email me. Um, okay. are more than happy to What's answer anything. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm sure we will have more questions, mainly the things I'm always, always asking myself, okay, what more can I be doing? What more can I be doing as far as marketing goes? So right now my main things are like Instagram and Facebook posting, um, making sure, you know, like our website is like good or whatever. And then, uh, Google reviews, open houses, and getting into like meeting on, military office, you know, you're way about you're yeah. you're way ahead as most people out there. So I'm going to send you the book right after this. Read it. Look at the steps, and you're going to be like, "Wow, I am already doing a lot of this stuff, but I'm not doing this and this." And then the circle ends up completing, and you'll see you'll end up if you keep this up, you'll just start end up having enough work where you start going part time welding, and then the next thing you know, you're full time home inspecting. Yeah. So it just it just yeah, it just takes a little bit of time and, and five weeks and seven jobs. That's unbelievably impressive. So you're on top of it and just build the next questions and then we'll follow up on the next podcast. Cause it's all about the follow up, making sure that you stick to it and don't forget about the book profit first. So you can get your finances in place and you don't spend three fifty a month on a, uh, on a magazine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Sound good guys. Well, yeah, we'll end the podcast there. Um, for everyone that's listening, don't forget to follow us on uh, the, our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can just type in Houston Home Inspector. I'm the first thing that shows up. And then how do they find you? What's your Instagram handle? It is Tucker Home Inspection. No S on the end. Just Tucker Home Inspection. Nice. And give them a follow and root them on as they, as they run their business. All right. Thanks, guys. And catch us on the next one. Mm-hmm.